As we told you last week, reports containing feedback from dioceses around the world are making their way to Rome. To consider the agenda of this two-year synodal process and where it might lead, I'm joined by theologian and former head of the Vatican's doctrinal office, Cardinal Gerhard Mueller. Your Eminence, thank yeah. you for being here. What thank a pleasure to see you again. See you again. Thank <laughs> you. And nice to have you on set. <laughs> um, the last two years, the church has been polling Catholics all over the world and non-Catholics, we might add, about their desires in the church and from the church. Now these national reports have been sent to Rome. Uh, internationally, an average of 1 to 10 percent of baptized Catholics have really taken part in these uh, synodal discussion groups. For such a small representative group, do, do these national surveys mean very much? Do they actually reflect what Catholics are most concerned about? I think the approach is wrong. We have not desires uh, towards God, but God has the des desires to us, mm -hmm. and we have to listen to the word of God and then to uh, put it in, in the practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a form of plebiscite in the Catholic Church, uh, is, I think, is against uh, Dei Verbum, the dogmatical constitution mm -hmm. of the Vatican Council, that the Church is listening to the word of God, that is uh, more important than this collection of so much things. Mm -hmm. uh, we have nothing to do with our life today. Yeah, these reports are, um, the, the concerns of these reports are curious. Uh, mm -hmm. In the U.S., England, Ireland, France, and others, they cite the need for a more welcoming church, Your mm -hmm. Eminence. In particular, the synthesis identifies uh, the LGBTQ plus community, the divorced Catholics, women in the church, they desire more control, power, mm -hmm. presence, representation. Uh, regarding the LGBT community, the U.S. Mm -hmm. report states the following. I'll put this up for you. The hope for a welcoming church expressed itself clearly with the desire to accompany with authenticity LGBTQ plus persons and their families. In order to be a more welcoming church, there's a deep need for ongoing discernment of the whole church on how to best accompany our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters. What do you make of this focus mm -hmm. on the LGBTQ plus community, and how do you see the evolving synod taking up those concerns? I think this ideology behind was to instrumentalize the Catholic Church and the faith for promoting their own ideas, but in reality everybody is welcome in the church, but first he must repent his sins and to change his life according to the commandments of God. And that, that is the best for us uh, human beings, mm -hmm. to follow the way of Jesus Christ and to change our life uh, according to these commandments and to the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. The, the, these national synthesis, these reports, mm -hmm. they all seem to tend in a direction of stronger leadership and more uh, presence in decision making for women. The Australians specifically request an ongoing discussion about the ordination of women and mm -hmm. deacons. Now, hasn't this question of female ordination been settled by the last several pontificates, including Pope Francis. Yeah, the approach is wrong. In the church, we have nothing to do with political power and self-representation, but we have to follow the will of God and to be responsible for the salvation of, of, the, of all, all the mankind, and we have to cooperate with the will of God. We have the mission of Jesus Christ mm. to lead everybody to the salvation to, to, uh, in Jesus Christ. He's the only uh, redeemer and not, we have not the self-creation, the self-redemption. Uh, uh, and then I think that it's all manipulated of, of our ideology and that uh, nothing to do with the gospel and, and the doctrine of the Catholic Church. As someone who has dedicated his life mm -hmm to protecting this doctrine and extending it. You mm -hmm. were head of the Vatican's Congregation mm -hmm. for the Doctrine of Faith. Mm -hmm. What must you think as you watch a, an, a, a system being created 
hmm. where all of that doctrine seems to be up for grabs, Your Eminence, hmm. where anyone can, by a popular vote, we can toss out or pull in doctrines of the moment, because that is given more weight than the time-tested eternal doctrines that the Church has embraced and championed since the time of Christ. The basis of the Church is the Word of God, is the revelation and not our uh, strange uh, reflections about this and these things. This is a system of self-revelation and is a, the occupation of the Catholic Church is a, is a hostile takeover mm -hmm. of the Church of Jesus Christ, which is a column of the truth, of the revealed uh, truth. And if you look only one page or read one page, of the the gospel of the uh, uh, gospels for the gospels or of the letters of the apostles, you see that is nothing to do with uh, uh, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. with uh, the triune God, and they think the the doctrine is only uh, like a program of a political party mm. who can change it according to their voters. Yeah. Your Eminence, Cardinal Mario Gresh, who is the Secretary General of this Synod of Bishops, spoke to 200 U.S. Catholic leaders last month in Rome. Uh, he talked of complicated issues, that's what he called them, such as divorced and remarried people receiving communion, uh, blessing same-sex couples, mm. and he said the following. These are not to be understood simply in terms of doctrine, but in terms of God's ongoing encounter with human beings. What has the church to fear if these two groups within the faithful are given the opportunity to express their intimate sense of spiritual realities which they experience? Might this be an opportunity for the church to listen to the Holy Spirit speaking through them also? End quote. Your thoughts when you hear that, setting up doctrine against God's ongoing experience with mankind. Yeah, it is a hermeneutic of the old uh, cultural uh, Protestantism and of the modernism that the individual um, experience has the same level as uh, objective revelation mm -hmm. of God. No? And God is only a wall no, to you which you can project your uh, proper ideas and to make a certain populism in the church. Uh, and uh, surely everybody outside of the church who want to destroy the Catholic Church and the fundaments, they are very uh, glad about these uh, declarations. But it's obviously that is absolutely uh, against the Catholic uh, doctrine. Mm -hmm. We have the, the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, and it's, it's, it's definitely uh, cl closed and finished in Jesus Christ, is fully uh, present, and we have to follow Jesus and not God have mm. to um, fulfill our subjective uh, wishes. And this is very absolutely clear that Jesus has spoken about in the indissolubility of mm -hmm. the um, matrimony and how is possible that Cardinal Craig is uh, uh, more intelligent than Jesus Christ, mm. where, where, where he takes his authority mm. to relativize the word of God. I have to say, I am, I am uh, shaken when I hear you say, mm. and you were just at a consistory, which we'll talk about in a moment, mm. that you believe this synodal process is really, mm -hmm. it's shaping up into a hostile takeover of the church, mm -hmm. uh, a, an attempt to destroy the church. Is that what you see here? Yeah, if, if they will succeed, but that will be the end of the Catholic Church. And we must resist. It's like the old heresies of the Arianism, mm -hmm. when Arius uh, thought, according to his ideas, what c can uh, God do and what can God n not do? <laughs> and uh, is, uh, the rationalism, the human uh, the intellects want to decide what is true and what is wrong. Yeah. I, I need to get into the process here, and I'd love your perspective on this. Mm -hmm. All these national reports mm -hmm. are being synthesized into a working document known in Rome as the Instrumentum Laboris. This document uh, continues to be refined, but ultimately it will guide all these discussions for this mm -hmm. synod in Rome. Mm -hmm. This is being drafted by the synod leadership, an advisory committee, and a group of approximately 20 
so-called experts. These are lay people, religious sisters, Catholic priests, an archbishop. Who are these people? And why have they been chosen to put this working document together? Why not a group of cardinals to do this? I think the result was clear before all these investigations and, 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 and questions. They had just uh, formulated the end, and then they, they are dreaming of another church, have nothing to do with the Catholic faith, absolutely against, and they want to ab abuse this process for shifting the Catholic Church in, in not only in other direction, but in, in, in the destruction of the Catholic Church. No? So responsible for the Catholic Church, for the doctrine, are the Pope and the, and the bishops, and, and nobody can uh, make an, an absolute shift and, and to substitute uh, the, the revealed doctrine of, of the church, but they have these strange ideas. The doctrine is only a theory of some theologians. The doctrine of the apostles is the reflection and uh, manifestation of the revelation of the word of God. We have to listen to the word of God in, in the authority of the Holy Bible, of the apostolic tradition, mm -hmm. and of the magisterium, mm -hmm. and uh, all the councils said before that it's not possible to um, substitute the revelation given once and forever in Jesus Christ by another revelation. Why do you believe the Pope is allowing this? Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a difficult question. Mm. <laughs> um, but I cannot understand it, I must say it openly, because the definition of the Pope uh, is in the Vatican Council and all the history of the uh, Catholic uh, theology, he is a, has to guarantee uh, the truth of the gospel and the unity of all the bishops and in the church in the revealed, um, mm. revealed truth. Yeah. And, um, Peter was asked, what, and all the apostles were asked, uh, who is Jesus Christ? Is a prophet or mm -hmm. is a new uh, Elijah or is a new, uh, another ritual, Moses, religious man, yeah. a Moses? And, and, and she said, in the name of the whole church of all the times, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And, and in this uh, confession, they are included all the other truths of uh, mysteries of the Catholic or Christian faith, the Trinity, the Incarnation, mm -hmm. the, the grace and the sacraments, all is here included. Yeah. Your, your Eminence, I hear from Protestant pastors, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish rabbis mm -hmm. uh, every day about the importance, their, the way they consider the importance of the Catholic Church because it is the center. And they said, the, we, we have to pray for the church that it holds because if the church falls apart, we all fall apart in some ways. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. This week, the official Twitter account of the Vatican Synod tweeted out the following from Cardinal Gresh. We were just talking about him, the Secretary General. Uh, regarding the Synod and the Second Vatican Council, he said, a correct reception of the Council's ecclesiology is activating such fruitful processes as to open up scenarios that not even the Council had imagined, and in which the actions of the Spirit that guides the Church is made manifest. What does that mean to you? Is the Church and its teaching essentially a democratic operation floating in endless possibility? Uh, Where well, is coming from the authority of Cardinal Craig? He has not uh, uh, own revelation for him and not only this, this theory about so-called processes uh, which are overcoming uh, the, the, the revelation and everybody knows, so I've studied the first semester of the theology, uh, that the church and the authorities and the church uh, cannot change the, uh, the, the revelation and that the council has uh, not the function to found mm -hmm. a new church according the things and, and there's an abuse also of this speaking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is not in, 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 a, in a way of the Presbyterianism or of all this uh, uh, pneumatic uh, movements outside of the Catholic Church. Uh, is not substituting Jesus Christ, is the, the spirit of uh, the Father and of the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit will introduce us in the full um, truth, but uh, once mm -hmm. and forever revealed in Jesus Christ. And therefore, this is, uh, so that is a counsel and not an impulse only for a process which lead us uh, as in, in, the, in, the, in the end uh, against mm -hmm. uh, the revelation. And, 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 and therefore, we have the, the apostolic creed and we have we count fast in the baptism. And that is the is basis and not to can you relative is a relativization of the church. And mm -hmm. I, I am very wondering that uh, the Cardinal Craig here presents himself as a super authority, is not a, a recognized theologian, he has no importance in the academic uh, theology and, and how he is here presenting a new hermeneutic of mm -hmm. the Catholic faith only because he is a, is a, is a secretary of a synod which has no uh, authority about the doctrine of the church and all this uh, synod of, of the bishops and the, mm -hmm. and the synodal process uh, has no authority, in no way magisterial authority. Huh. I, I want to show you something from last week. <clears throat> Various photos were uploaded <clears throat> to the Vatican Synod Facebook page illustrating the synod on synodality. One depicted, and we'll put it up here, a female priest prominently featured, you can see it there, mm -hmm. in the center, along with a young man in a pride shirt, made its way all over social media. The illustration reads, Your Eminence, we are the young people of the future, and the future is now. Animate this blossoming mission that is larger than any one of us. We desire to be on advisory councils and make decisions, end quote. Now, this and other illustrations all have the watermark of the, the Synod of Bishops in the upper corner. What's the message here, Your Eminence, and how is this viewed in Rome, I'm wondering? Well, I think there's a desire to take over a power which doesn't exist. They want to be more intelligent than God himself. Uh, it is a, it's like the Marxistic uh, f form of uh, creating uh, the truth by uh, presenting of his own power, medial power, and, and they present himself as a, to be um, modern and the, and the future, we are the future, mm -hmm. uh, in reality is only um, the intention, they have the intention to substitute their own subjective ideas uh, and, and against the uh, revealed uh, reality of uh, Jesus Christ as a destruction of the Catholic Church. Is this a play for Vatican III? Is that what they're attempting here, to kind of create a pop culture Vatican III? Yes, 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 yes surely it is. No? Mm. That, that, that is a, this, this, this very astonishing that is allowed under the authority, under and uh, in this context uh, of the Vatican, and they give the impression that it is really possible that the church with the pope or, or mm -hmm. with the secretary, general secretary of the synod, they are uh, uh, authorized uh, to be the, 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 the audience of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is only a function for them, no? it's only um, instrumentalized, has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit uh, who reveals himself, the Father and the Son in the, in the Holy Trinity, and the, the Holy Spirit who was uh, uh, <clears throat> responsible for the conception of the Son of God in uh, the, the womb of uh, the, the Mother uh, Mary, and this is a way um, to, to undermine the Catholic faith and Catholic mm -hmm. Church. I want to move on to an extraordinary consistory mm -hmm. of which you were a part of just a few weeks ago in Rome. 200 cardinals came together, closed door meetings to discuss the Pope's mm -hmm. reform of the Curia. Mm -hmm. um, that was at least what was on the, mm -hmm. the, the bill of fare. Uh, some cardinals have said that there was no time given to open dialogue once in the meeting. Was that your experience? No, we spoke only about this just published text, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is not the best one, <laughs> which came out from 
from Rome is this only was only the organization of the, the Roman Curia is not so important for the rest of the okay. church. Right. Right. It's only in turn so called uh, other form of organization and this is not uh, is not succeeded because uh, why is it because they changed uh, the essence of the Roman Curia as an ecclesial entity to only a form of administration, mm. worldly administration of, of the Vatican state, and they didn't distinguish between the Vatican state as a worldly reality and the Roman Curia as an ecclesial mm. uh, reality, but uh, that a part of all this um, would be a assembly of the cardinals. We have to to speak about the very great challenges uh, mm -hmm. of for the church of today, the anthropology and the tra post humanism, transhumanism, and the destruction of the church, that uh, not more the sacraments uh, are uh, the transmission of the, of the grace and the liturgy, the adoration of God, but is only uh, uh, a, a, a method for make their own uh, games uh, at, at, and, and uh, to look to himself and in, in a mirror. No? Mm. It's only a self-reflection uh, or a self-presentation and not uh, a true adoration of God. You were one of the cardinals who, uh, you really weren't able to deliver the remarks you had prepared. Mm -hmm. However, you did release them. And uh, this is what you, you said about not only the curial reforms, but concerns about the way papal power is now being mm -hmm. advanced in the church, if you will. You write this, it's not progress in ecclesiology, but a blatant contradiction to its fundamental principles if all jurisdiction in the church is deduced from the jurisdictional primacy of the pope Peter acts in the authority of Christ as his vicar. Mm -hmm. His authority to bind and loose is not a participation in the omnipotence of God. What concerns you most mm -hmm. about what we're seeing? Is it the diminishment of the bishop's authority? Um, is it pitting doctrine against not popular but the papal will at this point? Uh, well, on the one hand, we have this populism uh, of the synodalism. Everybody uh, could... Uh, yeah present his own subjective or sometimes so stupid ideas no? uh, as, uh, as a form of revelation, private revelation. <laughs> on, the, on the other hand, we have an understanding by, by some of, of the advisors of, of the Pope no? as if the Pope was an, an absolute uh, monarch no? mm -hmm. and is absolutely the contrary. The Pope is a, is a has to serve the church is <laughs> the first mm. uh, servant uh, of the church as Pope uh, Gregor, Gregor the, uh, the Great said and the, and the Vatican Council uh, the Second Vatican Council gave an equilibrium uh, between what the, the bishops are, the collegiality of the bishops and the responsibility of all bishops mm -hmm. for whole of the church not only, not only for their diocese and the papal uh, primacy uh, but the papal primacy has nothing to do, is absolutely the contrary of an uh, autocratic uh, system. The Pope is not in, in a direct con contact with uh, God. He doesn't receive the new revelations as we can read in Lumen Gentium mm -hmm. 25 and everywhere. Mm -hmm. He is only responsible for the conservation of, of the, the be, um, um, remaining true and faithful to that what is revealed and he to cannot protect the doctrine uh, of faith protect it and not to make an augmentation and, and widening and, mm -hmm. and changing according uh, the will of, of the people um, like in a, in a populistic uh, mm -hmm. dictatorship and in, in the form of a Peronism when the, the power of the Führer depends of the of the uplaws of, mm -hmm. of the masses, and mm -hmm. this, that is not not the model and, of, and the of, of the Catholic Church, because mm. Jesus Himself He is the head of of the Church, and uh, the Pope, the bishops are only servants of 
Jesus Christ in the name, they act in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, but not instead of Jesus Christ. There's a okay. great difference. I, I need to get to something. In July, Pope Francis named two women mm. and two nuns and a laywoman to the dicastery of bishops to help mm. choose mm. the bishops of the world. You believe the Pope has crossed a line here, and I want to quote you. You say it's a conferral of something extra sacramental. What does that mean? What is your concern? As the former concept was the congregation, the congregation of the cardinals who are taking part in the authority of the Roman pontiff, no? uh -huh. because they are the, the clergy of the Holy Roman Church who has the primate. Not only the Pope as a private mm -hmm. individual person has a primacy, but the Holy Roman Church with the higher cler clergy, which is, we say the cardinals, mm -hmm. cardinal of Latin is the higher uh, clergy, the cardinal bishops, the cardinal presbyters, the cardinal mm -hmm. deacons, cardinal deacons, and, and, and uh, this congregation was is a form of participation of the cardinals and on some bishops appointed by the pope in the church and, and, and in the power of the Pope, the authority of the, the Pope. And, and it's not only an organization, a worldly organization for uh, finding the personnel, mm -hmm. <laughs> leading uh, personnel. This is, this is a certain form of secularization of the mm -hmm. Roman Curia and of the, the, the Roman Church. And I think this is true among this group of the seven or nine cardinals who counseled the Pope and prepared this, there is no uh, theologian among them of, mm. of have an idea what, what, of a systematic theologian of ecclesiology. No? They mm. are more practical uh -huh. uh, uh, persons uh, like the Cardinal Marx. No? He has oh. the idea uh, we can um, uh, Govern the church like a worldly uh, like a, <laughs> organization, like a worldly corporation, worldly cooperation, mm -hmm. co cooperation. Mm -hmm. and, and that is strong. We, we don't need the advice of these worldly organizations uh, for the first. Well, it would be the, the ecclesiology when, is, is important. When I read your comments, I thought it would be like bringing you. Mm. getting three cardinals to come in and raise a child, raise an infant. Y you wouldn't know where to start if you haven't, if you're not a, either a physician who's been around children. Mm. Or That's a mother's role. Mm. Women are better disposed to that. Men are better disposed to that in the lay state. I, I, the confusion of states is a very curious moment we find ourselves in. Very quickly, I know we're running out of time. Um, cardinal Zen, mm. you were disturbed that at this consistory mm. there was no mention of Cardinal uh, Joseph Zen, who is undergoing trial right now, uh, arrested under false charges by the Chinese communists. His name wasn't evoked at the consistory. There was no prayer initiative. In fact, the pope has said, when asked if he thought it was a violation of religious freedom mm -hmm. to arrest Cardinal Zen, he said the following, to characterize China as anti-democratic, I don't feel like it because it's such a complex country with its own rhythms. Yes, it's true that there are things that seem to us not to be democratic. That is true. Cardinal Zen, elderly, will go to trial in a few days, I believe. He says what he feels. One feels that there are limitations there. Your reaction, why is the Vatican so determined? China is not a democratic system. They don't respect the basic human rights of life and freedom. and. Uh, we, and, and on the other side, nobody needs a hundred years for understanding China, this culture, because all the Chinese are human beings like us. Mm -hmm. And we are convinced uh, that all human beings are equal in their dignity and everybody is uh, called by God to become uh, son and daughter of God. And therefore, we have not the Western world, but the church, the universal church everywhere in the world. We have to defend the basic human rights and uh, our absolute right to preach the gospel uh, to every body. And mm -hmm. therefore, we think we all we are brothers and sisters in, in Jesus Christ. And especially, we have to defend also uh, our 
own brothers and sisters in Christ, especially uh, high representatives of the, of the yeah. church. It is not Cardinal Zell is not only a representative of of the church, but also a representative of the freedom mm -hmm. and the liberty of the Chinese people and the dignity of human of the human being. For, for the dignity has every body and there are not different classes yeah. and we cannot expect that this uh, politicians from uh, Peking to Moscow to Brussels and to until um, to, to Washington they cannot redeem the world they are, these politicians are responsible for the situation in which we are now uh, short for a possible mm. atomic war Mm -hmm. And therefore, our redeemer, our helper is God, and not yeah. these um, politicians yeah. who are responsible for the, for, yeah. for the chaos in which we are. No, no, we need to. The church needs to raise a moral voice and, and be the and, counter and, to and, the world. And according to these people, it's not enough to make uh, papal diplomacy, but we have also to confess very clearly uh, the truth. We have to resist against. These people like John Baptist, no, cannot mm -hmm. said, "Oh, Harold, you, you are yeah. uh, also my good friend. I can't understand you, and so I'll not do a deal sort of, with you and no, your no, and no, your new wife." No, no, it's not it's not allowed to you. Yeah. And yeah. Therefore, with with, uh, with dictators like Hitler, we cannot uh, make um, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, some speeches and and dialogues with with these people. We cannot dialogue. We have to resist to these people. Your Eminence, this week the Vatican unveiled a new documentary on climate change called The Letter. The film itself is aimed at conveying the messages of Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si. Cardinal Michael Cerny, he is the prefect of the dicastery of promoting uh, human development. He said the documentary is, quote, a clarion call to people everywhere. We have to act together. We have to do it now. Your Eminence, I saw an interview with this mm -hmm. filmmaker of this movie, which struck me as bizarre, that, that he said, this is not, I'm, I'm not Catholic, I don't believe in this, this is my truth, the filmmaker said, mm -hmm. and the Vatican is promoting this guy. Mm -hmm. Why are we endorsing this secular idea of truth, A, and B, why is climate change more discussed than the revelation of Jesus Christ? The climate change could be a question, but it's therefore uh, are responsible our politicians, no? they are responsible for the common good of the nations and of the of the mankind, and, and surely we, as a church, we can only help with some moral principles, but we cannot be the avant-garde uh, for this. Uh, mm. Uh, only worldly uh, questions. The, the church was not founded for this, uh, not for as, as, as a help, uh, help organization for the, the Roman state or for the later uh, states, um, but it's a salvation of everybody. That is a, that is a mission of the yeah. church. Jesus sent the apostles to go all over the world and to preach the gospel, to baptize the people the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, and not only to look in the um, welfare in this world, but also for the eternal mm -hmm. life, for the eternal mm -hmm. salvation. That is the mission of the church. It's not an NGO. The, all the times the Pope said uh, the church is not an NGO. This is absolutely clear because yeah. the church is instituted by it. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not, not only uh, we are not running uh, in concurrence uh, with other competence, with other uh, worldly organizations who have only a limited mm -hmm. uh, aim. No? Your Eminence, thank I thank you, you for much. your time. I thank yeah. you for coming and yeah. for your clarity. Thank we you hope much. to see you back soon. Thank, thank you. you.